Okay, I'm going to go over the very basics of the numerical calculation. There's a lot of stuff out there. I've done it different ways. I want to try to be clear uh, to get you started on this. So let's just imagine that we have a ball here. I've shown this ball and, it, and it's moving along the x-axis at a constant velocity. So at some time it has position x1, a little bit later it's x2, x3, blah, 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 so forth. And it has a velocity v, which I'm just drawing as a scalar because we're only in one dimension. So if I use the definition of average velocity, which is constant in this case, average velocity is the change in x over the change in time. That's how it's defined. And so here, the distance from x1 to x2 is my change in x. And however long that took is delta t. So I could rewrite that. Instead of saying delta x, I could say x2 minus x1, the final minus the initial, is delta x. So if I put that in, I get x2 minus x1 over delta t. Now if I multiply both sides by delta t, I can solve this equation, v average equals x2 minus x1 over delta t, and I get this. I get x2 equals x1 plus the average velocity times however long that took. So this is a very important equation right here. This tells me that if I know where the ball is and I know the velocity, I can find out where it's going to be right here at x2 after some time. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so how do we do this in a program? How do we do this numerically? Let's make a program that does this exact same thing. Um, so let me just switch over here to GlowScript. Okay, so this is GlowScript.org. Uh, it's a built-in uh, programming environment for you in a web page. You just need it run in Safari or Chrome. I'm not sure about Firefox, but I'm just going to make a ball and show you how easy this can be. So let's just say ball equals sphere. Let's put it, I'm going to go quick. Um, and then if there's some things you don't understand, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, let's give it, let's say it's, um, let's say five centimeters. So 0 0.05. And of course, it's got to be red. Okay, that's it. That's my program. I just, sphere is a built-in object in this programming language, and uh, I gave it a position, I gave it a size, and I gave it a color. Run it. And so you see there's my ball. And, and this is actually in 3D. I can right-click on the mouse and rotate around. I can zoom in and zoom out, okay? But that all that three-dimensional stuff's taken care of by the program. Okay, so now let's give it some other parameters. Let's say uh, the velocity is, let's say it's 0.3 meters per second. So I'm going to call that ball dot v. And you could just call it v, but it, it turns out to make a little more sense if you associate that velocity with the ball. And you could call this, instead of ball, you could call it tom or whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to give this, um, it's also a vector. Okay, I'm giving it a vector quantity because that's going to be better for you later on. And it's going to have a 0 0.300. This says it's moving with a velocity of 0.3 meters per second in the x direction, 0 in the y, 0 in the z. Okay, um, I also need time. Time equals 0. And I need a time step. The key here is that we're going to calculate the position of this ball every so often. And let's just put that this at dt equals 0 0.01, so every hundredth of a second. Okay, I'm going to do this for, let's say, three seconds. So I'm going to put while t less than three. I'm going to calc, I'm going to, I'm going to actually put this in here. This statement here, I'll tell you in a second what it does. Uh, so now I'm going to say this. This statement right there is exactly what I showed you right here. This says position equals position plus v times dt. Now there's one, and so ball.pos is the position part of this object. See, it's in here, position. So it is a position. And ball.v is that. And dt is my delta t. Now, 
there's one problem with this little thing right here, that equal sign. This is not the algebraic equal sign. This is the assigned variable. This says make the position of the ball equal to what it was plus the average velocity times dt. Okay, so that's it. Now I do need to do one other thing. I'm going to say t equals t plus dt. So after I calculate the position of the ball, I'm going to update the time. And then that will make this time eventually get to 3. In Python, this is Python, everything that's indented here is inside this loop. Okay, So you can recreate this program and run it. Now I'm going to tell you about this, this rate 100. This means don't do things as fast as you can. Instead, don't do more than 100 calculations every second. And since this is 1 one hundredth of a second, this should run in real time. Okay, let's run this program. Click run. There it goes. Okay, now it, it, it looked a little weird because the camera for the program zoomed out to fit things in there, but um, that's why the ball got smaller. Let's do this. Oops. Let's print at the after the loop. I'm going to print the time. I'm going to print the ball dot pos dot x, the x position of the ball. If it's going at 0.3 meters per second for three seconds, how far should it go? Think about that. Pause, pause this video and make sure you have an answer. Okay. Did you pause the video? I, was, I wasn't kidding. Pause the video. See if you can figure that out. Okay. Now I'm going to run it and we'll see what the computer program gives. So it's going to run the, the program. It's going to stop when it gets to three seconds. And then you can't see it. Ah. Okay, let's see. Sorry, my... There. It printed out 3.01. Okay, the time is a little bit greater and 9.903. That's because what this does is it uh, it said while t is less than 3. It went through here and it got... Uh, it did it one more time uh, to get up to there. Okay, but what if it's not at a constant velocity? So let's go back to this. So now let's say I throw a ball up. There's something different if it's going up and that it has an acceleration. So this statement, the position equals the position plus the average velocity times delta t is still true. But it doesn't move at a constant velocity. So I can calculate, use the same idea, the definition of average acceleration, I can get this expression. This says the new velocity is the old velocity plus the acceleration times dt. Now, there's a trick. This isn't technically true. Okay? I mean, it's still true of the average velocity, but do I use v1 or v2, or, or do I use the actual average? The trick is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if my delta t is small, then these two velocities are similar to each other. Okay? So, that I can use either v1 or v2. So let's change our program so the ball gets thrown up and we'll include this gravitational acceleration. So I'm going to go back to the same program. Uh, I'm going to change that's all the initial stuff's fine. I'm going to say it's thrown up so it has initial velocity in this in the y direction. I also need the gravi the acceleration I'll just call it g g equals uh, vector 0, negative 9.8, 0. So down here, I just need to add in, everything in here is fine. I just need to add in ball dot v equals ball dot v plus g times dt. And I don't need to put minus g. I've already included that minus in the, in the vector here. Okay, so uh, let's just see what happens. This is going to run for three seconds, which is kind of long, um, but let's just run it anyway. Okay, so it immediately started dropping because it wasn't going very fast. Let's let's give this an, a velocity of uh, four meters per second up. 
there it goes. And then you see here, oh, it did print the, uh, it printed the final position. And you can't see it. Again, messed up. Okay. There it is. So the final position is actually zero. If I change this velocity, we could get that. That's weird. Oh, that's the final x position. Let's print the final y position. And there it is, negative 32, so it went pretty far. Okay, that's enough, I think, to get you started on this, um, and I'll just end right here.